Have you ever had a mystical experience? That's a question. When I started this video, I was going to make an assumption that most people haven't, or a lot of people haven't, but perhaps everyone at one age or another has had some sort of a mystical experience. But I guess that would depend on how you label it. Something un unexplainable that leads you to believe that there's something greater than just this basic three-dimensional reality. I would think a mystical experience could include anything that shows us that the, the picture is bigger than we're, we're assuming it is. And that maybe, just maybe, there's a universal mind or something out there that's wiser than we are, which isn't too far of a hurdle, you know, to clear. That's, uh, in my mind, just seems obvious that, you know, in reductionist philosophy and scientific methods, we tend to try to find the simplest answers. Even when we look and say, well, things down to a certain level may have a certain amount of consciousness all the way up to the human brain, we stop at the human brain rather than extending that to the world, to the solar system, to the galaxy. We don't understand very much. And we especially don't understand consciousness and what it entails. And there's this age-old debate about free will and determinism, God or no God, personal God or uh, general God, you know, what? everyone racing to define the parameters <laughs> of what these mysteries are. And then there's those who stand by in the sidelines and just kind of cheer on all people who are trying to discover something. I consider myself one of those people. Anybody who's trying to discover and understand ourselves better, I, I commend that, and I think it's great. In all regards, there seems to be this idea that there's a competition between science and religion, which is one of the most absurd things I can imagine. There are fringes on both sides that make it appear that way, but science was derived from religion to try to help explain the world better so that we could better understand what people call God. And it's only in recent times that, you know, we've become so secular that we fail to really acknowledge that even the most secular societies still believe in something greater. There's very few people who are absolutists, full materialists, that don't believe in anything beyond what they see. But they're out there. I don't personally think that being that extreme of a skeptic I don't even think skeptic is the right word for it. it. I would almost consider it ignorant if I were to pretend like everything was material just because of the experiences I've had personally. My personal experience does attest to something in my life. And uh, it's difficult to navigate not knowing what's true and what's not, what you should have faith in and what you shouldn't. But these experiences can be achieved in many ways some through various yoga practices, uh, meditation, certain types of meditation, um, by doing breathing exercises, or taking psychedelics or other substances, disassociatives, things that put your mind in a state where you've shut down your standard thinking and you're able to access your subconscious. And the more a person's practice this, the better they get at it. Just like anything, you have to navigate this space that you've never been to before. And it's very exciting at first, however you may achieve it. This idea that, wow, I don't have to do all this critical thinking right now. I can just focus on one thing. And you might be able to even access memories from your far past that you haven't thought about in years. Um, which tells me that there is a side of the brain that is aware of things that we shut out purposefully because they're too either painful or they take up too much space. But there they are in our subconscious, constantly feeding and programming how we operate. And so in order for us to really see who we are, we have to know what these things are that are hidden in our subconscious. And this is what, you know, philosophy is for. Really understanding the mind, understanding who we are, so we can better lead lives that are more conducive to being human. And I'm constantly fascinated by the mental gymnastics that people play to either convince themselves or convince others of certain things or 
to convince themselves or convince others that something isn't true or to think the way I think or this is true, this isn't the dogma that gets wrapped up fails to understand the polarities which I mentioned in a video the other day the fact that everything has polarities and we can't escape that so there are certain things that we discover about ourselves in the world that can't be put into words They're very hard to express and I find myself short of the words to express them when I want to so I generally just don't say anything. I wasn't even going to make this video because I'm already trying to figure out how to define some of the things that I want to say. It's just for lack of being able to express that, the ineffable, the greatness of the universe and existence itself. There's just too many things that flood in at once. But when you meet somebody else who understands that, a simple nod can give away a person's position on these things because you know they've been there. You can see it. You know, the eyes really are the window to the soul and with a lot of folks you can see if you relate to them pretty quickly with the glance. Not always. But I think this is why I've always been attracted to things like festivals, Grateful Dead shows since the first time I went, um, and like the regional Burning Man soak out here which I went to for almost, I think 10 years. Um, then they started requiring a vax card and I didn't want to comply so I didn't go anymore which is unfortunate but kind of went against their own policies of radical self-expression and freedom but the people that I would meet there and the experiences I would have with folks led me to believe that there really is a community of people out there who understand these things and everyone understands that it in their different in a different way in their own way this is the key it's not a religion based thing where you have to believe what another person believes and there's definitely never a middleman to get you to the truth and I think that's one of the big keys here the big takeaway these things are free they don't cost anything except the time and the effort to do the rituals to get to the point where you can actually have these epiphanies but too many folks don't quiet their minds long enough we're constantly distracted every free minute we have sitting there on our phones or our computers or listening to music. How many people sit silently, just quietly for an hour or two, just think? It's hard to do. We got things we could be doing, you know? I enjoy the process of educating myself and learning as I go and looking back at my failures and follies which is why I don't make too many absolute claims in my life because I realize how quickly what we think is true will change but more importantly I've learned that certain things aren't important and don't even matter the trivialities in life don't matter small talk is still important to get to know people, these things. It's not like we have to be always talking about the deepest things in life, but generally, I try to surround myself with people who can discuss controversial topics without getting upset, or that can discuss religion or politics or money without letting it get, get to them and, and you know, get all riled up. And that's getting rare, it's harder to find. But it's even rarer to find people who have had these really deep mystical experiences that when I read some of them, especially the reports people have of their experience, it's so similar to mine. It's just, wow, this is exactly what I went through. And you start wondering about these archetypes that, and these stories we've been told and passed down. And I can look back and say, perhaps I was a little too hard on people who have beliefs that, of things they can't see. Naturally, as you know many others I was raised as a skeptic be cautious about what people tell you because a lot of people do lie especially to make money but once you start selecting who's telling the truth who's delusional um, who truly feels the way they feel um, you see that there's more to it it's a bigger picture some of these experiences are mind-blowing um, and very difficult to explain my own personal experiences um, have been very personal to me, but have led me to believe in a higher power in a way that I've proven it to myself 
rather than just being taught to believe something and then trying to prove it to myself. And that is a reward in itself. You know, I've sought answers for many years and finally got the answers that I sought. And now it's a matter of just living them. And that's maybe the hardest part. We'll see. But uh, if you've had a mystical experience, please leave it in the comments and let me know. Thanks for watching, and thank you all for uh, leave a thumbs up if you like it and all that shit. If you'd like to contribute to the channel and see some extra stuff, you can check out my Patreon and my podcast, 15 Minute Free Thinking, which I'm falling way behind on. And with that, I salute you all for existing. The captain says, we must all go down with the ship eventually, but until then, we will set sail on high seas. Arg, no matter the weather. Ha, ha, ha.